and he has a vast experience of 15 years in teaching and research he is also a reader and author of various international journals such as elsewhere stranger in england and many more he has also received the best paper award in international conference for his research work and he has worked on several funded projects from government private organizations mumbai university so he is uh, engaged in research activities Dr. Indy Baskar sir has also worked as an advisory member for conferences and institute academic committees. He is a senior. He has served as a senior manager of the professional body, Indian Institute of Industrial Engineering. He has handled responsibilities as of editor of conference proceeding. He has also delivered several expert talks in engineering and management, and competitive exam preparation. He has also filed two patents. So, with this short uh, introduction, I'd like to welcome our today's expert, Dr. N. J. Panaskar sir. Uh, so, hand over to Vidhinar. Okay, thank you, Dr. Poddar sir, it's uh, for your warm introduction. Okay. Uh, so, today we'll uh, be uh, starting with a topic uh, which I will share from. Uh, my experiences also as well as my uh, the work what i am uh, doing in these areas okay uh, so we'll start i will start presenting the slide okay is the slide visible clearly and am i audible yes sir yes sir okay thank you sir Okay, so we'll start this topic: solid-state welding, recent developments and applications. So uh, this is a very important topic. So manufacturing area is one of the important areas. Even uh, our country is focusing uh, on making India okay, a policy, uh, and welding as such is also very very important process which can make us create products and structures with economical price range okay. so we'll understand this welding processes today so before going to the advances in the welding processes we'll just in a gist understand what is welding okay so as we all know it's a metal joining processes where we <coughs> can join different metals mostly by heating them to a suitable temperature so mostly uh, this temperature is above the melting point because after both the metal metal parts have melted we allow them uh, to coalesce that is mix with each other and after solidification okay we get the final joint okay now before solidification we may also apply pressure if required okay to assist the process now advantage of using welding is that it makes permanent joint so wherever we need permanent joints we don't need it for this for dismantle it for maybe repair or replacement there we will, uh, will go for welding mostly in car manufacturing we'll see a lot of welding is done even pressure vessel bullet <coughs> where we need to um, transport oil or uh, what to say harmful gases okay there will not uh, dismantle or we don't expect it to dismantle or break at any point of time so we'll go for welding for those pressure vessel tanks also okay uh, so a uh, variety of applications are there like automobile bodies are there aircrafts frames railway wagons machine frames as i said pressure vessel bullets and structural works tanks basically uh, some furniture boilers okay. and a uh, general repair work also we may do the welding and of course ship building okay. so uh, i will come to the ship building also where uh, we know about the uh, uh, titanic okay so it was it, it has failed due to the uh, one of the uh, what you say theories they said that the rivets failed okay uh, of course that was due to the <coughs> uh, uh, striking with the or colliding with the iceberg 
okay but if the rewards would have been much stronger uh, maybe we would have got much uh, more time to save many people okay so uh, nowadays even these rewards are getting replaced by solid state welding process only okay so this is about uh, what is the welding process next coming to solid state welding okay as the name suggest okay here the coalescence of the part surfaces is achieved by pressure alone or heat and pressure okay uh, as, as the name suggest we are doing this welding in a solid state that means we are not melting the metal okay the metal is still in the solid state technically not solid state perfectly solid it is a plastic state but because it is not melted we prefer calling it still as a solid state because unless we melt it we cannot say liquid state so we uh, say it is a solid state uh, but in actual practice it is in a plastic stage okay uh, now if pressure alone is not sufficient for this process then we may use some amount of heat okay in this process and <laughs> for some processes time is also a factor so we'll understand this process okay uh, the other important thing here is no filler metal is added. Okay, so if you see in fusion welding processes, we'll be adding a filler material because uh, we uh, prepare a proper surface okay, for the welding process in which uh, the material is uh, removed and further uh, during the process, okay, um, there is patter also. So to take care of the material lost, we can add additional material to retain the strength of the weld or improve the strength of the weld we can say so filler metal is added in the fusion welding process wherein in this solid state welding we will be not adding any filler material because that is not required as such okay, okay now coming to the various types of solid state welding process we will understand there are different types one is the friction welding then ultrasonic welding roll welding explosion welding and the friction stir welding processes okay so we'll just understand one by one in a short what these processes mean so coming to friction welding which is the most basic process what we know so what we are doing here we are achieving coalescence by frictional heating combined with pressure okay and no filler metal is added here no flux is added even shielding gases are not required and we can use this process not just for joining similar metals but also for joining uh, dissimilar metals okay and uh, this process can be used for commercial processes and it is we can convert it uh, to uh, automation and also use it for uh, mass production so <clears throat> the basic um, um, application of using friction welding is joining of two shafts okay so i will just uh, show you a small video where we will understand how this friction stir welding process is uh, not not friction weld stir welding friction welding process is done okay we also have a variant of this which is friction stir welding which we will discuss at the last mm. Uh, so we'll see our first example which is a friction welding of shaft okay so two shafts will uh, see how they are welded by the friction welding process yes sir yes 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 Thank you. 
okay so uh, this was a basic uh, example of friction welding so what we have simply done we have taken two shafts okay and uh, both the shafts are rotating in the opposite directions okay and we are gradually allowing them to um uh, what to say interact with each other okay gradually allowing it to get into contact with each other and as they touch we apply a specified calculate amount of pressure okay and we allow it to um uh, rub the surface of each other okay so what we are doing is we are allowing frictional heat to be produced between the shafts okay and this heat uh, is produced to a such high levels that it is sufficient to melt the two metals only at the interface so that is localized heating and that is sufficient to weld the two parts okay so it is a very very fast process and we have seen in the example that we are also able to remove the excess material that is flash which was uh, produced okay so this way the friction welding process can be done so very easy and very fast process so uh, the advantage is we can uh, use it for shafts tubular parts also of course for uh, pipes okay so industrial automotive aircraft farm equipment petroleum natural gas okay so these industries we can be using again limitation is at least one part should be rotational okay so if we don't have a like a customized machine for uh, doing it okay we may still do it on a lathe machine where we'll fix uh, uh, one part one section okay and the other part will allow it to rotate okay so uh, of course the uh, speeds required in this uh, will be much uh, larger rot rotational speeds because when we rotate in opposite direction we get a larger difference of relative rotational speed but when we one uh, part is stationary then we will require a additional rotational speed okay so like say uh, 250 uh, rpm in the clockwise direction and 250 rpm in the anti clockwise direction so the difference relative difference between the speeds is 500 rpm okay so if we have one stationary object then uh, the another rotary motion we should get 500 rpm to get the similar effect okay so that we have to understand but of course it can be done okay if both the parts are not rotating so you those students who want to do experiments or research in this friction welding and they don't have any uh, specialized setup even this can be used okay of course the process mechanics become slightly different but then we can still be able to do the uh, welding okay again flash must usually be removed so uh, normally it is removed in the heated state only because it is much easy it's in a plastic state uh, the flash okay so that is removed immediately okay uh, uh, because it's not a part of the weld it is an external part which you can easily remove uh, but we should um, have a mechanism for that removing okay which will easily get on the lathe, lathe machine uh, and if you don't remove it then we can remove it later on but later on it will be in a perfectly solid state and we'll have to put in much much more effort in removing that flash so uh, this you have to understand and accordingly remove the flash but of course if you do it in the process itself that's not a big challenge again upsetting reduces the part length okay because if you have two shafts of one meter then we will not get a two meter length okay so it will be slightly reduced accordingly we can calculate it and compensate uh, the length by giving an additional dimension so find very easy process so once you understand this process of friction welding here we are not giving heat externally we are only allowing friction to occur and how we are allowing friction by applying pressure and rotating the two parts okay and the heat which is produced is produced within the process okay it's not an external heat it is a internal heat which is produced due, due to the application of process and the rotary motion okay the next process here is ultrasonic welding so here we are using two components and oscillatory shear stresses of ultrasonic frequency are applied to the interface to cause coalescence. Okay. So here also you are uh, using this uh, frictional heat. Okay. So this oscillatory motion that will break down any surface films 
to allow this intimate contact and strong metallurgical bonding between the surface will occur okay now in in this case the heating what we are doing okay that is well below the melting temperature okay so in most solid state welding it will be much much less as compared to the uh, melting temperatures okay uh, mostly it will be in the range of 60 to 80 percent of the melting temperature so that will be it will be in the plastic state okay so most of these uh, metals will be in the plastic state again as said we don't require any filler or metal flux or shielding gas but uh, we may require some compensation okay so uh, for some material loss we can use some compensation as discussed in the friction welding we'll have to provide some additional material uh, because some may be lost in flash okay so there we may require some compensatory material again generally this ultrasonic welding will use for lab joints on soft materials like aluminum and uh, copper only. okay so you can see this uh, we have this mass and anvil and the two parts which are to be welded are uh, um, placed in the lab joint configuration and we have this ultrasonic transducer which is providing this vibratory motion and due to this continuous motion okay and the frictional heat we are able to produce sufficient heat to join the two lab sheets okay lab configuration sheets okay. so this is a general setup for a lab joint so this is process only for uh, lab welding joints okay. uh, next we'll go to this application so wire terminations okay uh, assembly of aluminum sheet metal panels welding of tubes to sheet in solar panels and assembly of small parts in automotive industry so as we can see the heat produced okay the entire operation is only due to the heat produced and that is leading to this uh, welding okay so the uh, heat produced is not that much that high okay that we can join any metal so uh, using this process we may only join soft metals like aluminium okay uh, we may not be able to uh, do the welding for much harder metals like titanium there we may go for some other choice of uh, solid state welding process okay so to understand the limitations of the process also next is roll welding so we we'll see here uh, so here we are using sufficient pressure okay uh, by the means of rolls okay either with or without external heat a uh, rolling process we have already seen where we can um, reduce the thickness of the sheets okay again rolling you may also seen as a variant in forging roll forging and here the same uh, principle of rolling we are using for the welding process okay so uh, it will the variation will be depending on whether external heat is supplied in that case it will be called as cold roll welding and if heat is supplied we will call it the hot roll welding so we can see here we have these two rolling mills and the parts which are to be welded okay. so we have this heat as well as pressure okay so we can either have only pressure if it is sufficient uh, so if the plates are thin enough we may only use pressure but for slightly thicker plates maybe 2 mm 3 mm or more we can go for roll mills with the application of external heat also along with pressure so this is very easy process so you have to just pass the two sheets through through these two rolls okay pair of rolls and uh, what what we get at the uh, output is uh, the welded welded sheets okay so much much easy convenient process okay and uh, best suited okay uh, trying to do this using fusion welding process will be very very complicated so uh, this way we can do the uh, uh, welding of sheets very economically and in a simple easier way so uh, that we can uh, directly related to the rolling process it's the mechanism if you see it's directly the rolling process but based on what we are um, doing okay we'll get the output as either a welded product or a um, uh, thinned out sheet okay so mainly this will be using for biometallic strips for measuring temperature then sandwich points okay cladding 
uh, where we just need to uh, um, uh, clad different metals okay for corrosion resistance okay. so maybe for steel we can have thin sheets of copper or on uh, copper we can have thin sheets of aluminum so that type of cladding we can uh, do on the metallic sheets okay next is the explosion welding so here we'll see that rapid coalescence of these two metallic surfaces called by energy of a detonated explosive so this will be similar to rolling process but it will be much much faster okay much much faster process uh, because we are using explosive here and uh, of course no filler metal is used we don't need any heat external heat and no diffusion occurs because the time is too short okay it's very very fast process because of the explosion and the bonding is metallurgical combined with metallic metallic interlocking that results in the simple rippled and wavy interface so let's understand how we are <laughs> doing this process so uh, mostly we'll use this to bond dissimilar metals uh, uh, particularly to clad one metal on top of the base metal okay so what we have is the explosive okay so we have this detonator or explosive what we call it then we have this backer plate which is placed on the anvil and we have a clearance gap uh, and what happens during this explosive process okay when this explosion starts okay as in the scene in the image you can see this the explosion is progressing okay explosion is progressing from the leftward direction to the rightward direction okay and as this starts exploding you can see this flyer plate that gets welded to the backer plate okay because of this impact of explosion now in the image you can see it is progressing but in the actual practice this is done in uh, milliseconds okay in the actual practice this explosion will be done in milliseconds okay just for our understanding we are considering it what how the progression is happening so it will be very fast press, uh, process where your flyer plate will be welded to the backer plate instantaneously due to the impact of this explosion okay. so a very important process this is one of the uh, important process which we use for the cladding of metals okay next we'll go to this final process which is also a very very important process called as the friction stir welding process so what is this process we'll understand so uh, this is one of the newer solid state welding process which was developed by wm thomas in 1991 by the welding institute uk okay so what was done here this was uh, basically used for joining aluminum and its alloys okay so why aluminum and alloys because these were the popular metals used in aerospace industries and uh, aero in aerospace industries we want good strength and reduced weight okay so aluminum not pure aluminum is not strong but it is lightweight but it alloys okay aluminum alloys they can be as strong as steel and of course it they will continue to be lightweight only because it's still an alloy okay so we'll just add some alloying elements which will improve its strength but its density will not increase uh, or, or rather only increase marginally but the strength will be significantly increased so we get very very strong aluminum alloys with very less weight so that is one of the important um, requirements of the aerospace industries to have lightweight strong uh, metallic parts now further this process has also been advanced where we can join different metals other than aluminum okay so primarily the main studies were done on all aluminum but later on other metals like steel magnesium titanium they were also joined and now nowadays this process is also used for joining polymers that is plastics what we know better uh, so what is this process we'll understand so it's a low energy input process which is capable of producing high strength welds in the wide range of materials at lower cost okay so uh, the strength uh, what we get in this process is comparable to the 
latest advances in the fusion welding which we know is the uh, laser welding process but then uh, in laser welding you will have to go for a very very huge investments but for fsw uh, you if if we have a cust- option to invest we can use a customized machine uh, but uh, we can also use uh, machines like the cnc machines uh, to do or even the conventional milling machines to do this uh, fsw process okay so it is uh, on our choice on our, our budget to decide uh, what type of equipment we'll use for the fsw process so we can go from uh, low cost options to even the uh, expensive options based on what is our uh, budget requirements and the uh, production volumes uh, but in laser welding we will have to in, have a uh, huge investment initial investment there is no options of a uh, low budget laser welding processes okay so that difference you have to understand okay so coming to the process we'll understand what uh, how this process is done so fsw it uses a cylindrical shoulder tool so you can see this is the uh, cylindrical uh, shoulder tool so and this end okay end of the tool okay that is called as a shoulder and below the sh- shoulder we have a pin okay which is a tapered pin okay. you know, most of the time this uh, tapered pin it will also have some threads okay you can see as in this tool uh, we can say the a cylindrical tool pin or a tapered tool pin uh, based on what is the profile of that pin and this pin can also have threadings or it may also be plain uh, based on the uh, application okay or based on the requirement of this uh, tool a tool shoulder you can see that is just the part above the pin okay so that will be the part which will be resting on the surface of the uh, metal plates and finally you have the tool shank okay so tool shank is used to hold that tool okay just like we hold the uh, shaft in the chuck of the uh, lathe similarly in the uh, spindle okay with the help of a collet we will be using holding this tool okay so your tool shank will go into the collet uh, collet and this collet will be fixed to the spindle okay so this way we can um, fix the tool to any of the cnc machines or uh, milling machines okay conventional milling machines or even cnc milling machines so and this way uh, the tool will be fixed and now uh, we, this will give a more clear understand of what we are exactly saying so uh, we have this shank okay this is the shoulder okay so uh, we'll understand how this shoulder acts okay so this shoulder will be resting on the metal surface and as in most of these uh, solid state welding processes the main component of heat is friction okay so here in this process the friction which will be produced or the heat which will be produced in this process will be due to the frictional heat which will be produced by the rubbing of the shoulder okay rubbing of this shoulder or rather i would say the uh, surface of the shoulder on the metal okay so when this entire surface okay this surface rubs on the metal it creates frictional heat and this frictional heat is sufficient to bring the metal to a plastic state okay so what is plastic state it will be a state where the metal can deform with even a small pressure and this plastic state will be attained at around 60 to 80 degree uh temperatures of the melting point and um this is fine so i uh, will say sir this is also done in uh, ultrasonic vibration also we are doing a similar thing why we require the tool pin okay so as discussed in that uh, uh process also ultrasonic uh, uh, welding that we are not able to join harder metals okay we are only able to join soft metals because we had only uh very sufficient amount of heat to be heat produced okay but if you want much higher amounts of heat produced then along with the shoulder frictional heat we should also have uh mechanical movement or deformation of the two metals okay now what is the purpose by deforming the two metals okay we can allow intermixing of the metals okay that is mechanical intermixing okay uh, so this we allow and when we have mechanical intermixing along with frictional heating 
then this will help us to achieve higher heat as well as the join any hard metals also so we can join uh, metals like copper steel or even titanium by this frictional welding process now where we get this mechanical mixing okay so that function of mechanical mixing of the two metals is done by this tool pin so this tool pin penetration to the surface you can see we have these two plates which are arranged in a butt joint configuration okay so joints may uh, alag alag configurations rehte so one is the butt joint where the two plates are kept adjoining each other then there is a lap joint which we have seen in ultrasonic welding where the two plates are kept on top of each other so overlap is there okay so because of that overlap we call it as the lap joint maybe 100% overlap or maybe a partial overlap but that is still a uh, lap lap welding here what you can see in this image is a but joint configuration where the two plates are kept adjoining each other okay and what we'll do now okay first when we start this process we will rotate this tool okay and when we rotate this tool we will touch the tool to the surface uh, where the two plates are joined okay two plates are kept in contact with each other they are not joined yet we have just kept it in contact with each other and we have uh, fixed them so that they don't move aside okay so maybe by some suitable uh, uh, clamps okay we are here fixed them so that they don't move away from each other and just like the drilling process you can see we have this threaded pin okay and this tool is rotating will allow this threaded pin section to drill this surface and enter the interface okay completely okay now after above this threaded pin what we have is the shoulder surface okay so after this threaded pin goes completely inside this interface the shoulder will rest on this surface okay now we will not penetrate further once the shoulder has rested on the surface we will stop there okay stop the z direction or the vertical motion and we will continue only with the rotational motion okay so earlier what we were doing rotational motion was also there and we were also giving a vertical motion because of which this threaded pin penetrated inside the weld inter uh, sorry uh, the metal interface okay and then we have stopped when the shoulder is rested on the surface and now what is happening the shoulder is just rubbing on the surface okay just rubbing and now we will give the motion in the x direction that is you can see in the direction along the interface where we want to do the welding so the tool will now move in the direction in this image you can see it will start moving in the rightward direction okay it will start moving in the rightward direction now what is happening in this process so due to this frictional heat what happens okay the surface which is below this shoulder that will go into the plastic state so the temperatures which will be created will be around 80% of the melting point so say it's aluminum uh, which is around 660 degree celsius melting point so this surface temperatures which will be below this shoulder it will go to up to 80% of this that is around 550 570 degree celsius and at that temperature it is soft okay it is soft it is in a plastic state so it can move if we apply any pressure so now what is applying pressure you can see this pin is already pro, uh, uh, penetrated inside the surface and it is rotating okay so what it will do it will mix the uh, material of the left plate with the material of the right plate so mechanical mixing will be done by this motion of this pin okay mechanical motion jaise hum uh, just like how we make dough okay we do it by mechanical motion okay the same mechanical motion we are mechanically mixing the uh material of uh, leftward plate with the metal of the rightward plate both of our aluminum metal only okay so this mechanical mixing is done and then as the tool uh, moves ahead the temperature starts uh, uh, dropping drastically and after some time it is completely solidified okay so this process it is a uh, very fast process so as soon as the tool starts moving in the rightward direction the part which has just been welded it even starts solidifying okay because melting has never occurred okay it has only reached up to 80 degree temperature so as soon as we finish the welding 
in maybe a couple of minutes the entire um, surface easily drops to 40 degree or 30 degree of the melting point and in the next three four or five four six minutes more uh, it will be at room temperature so you can see the process is very very fast okay and the cooling is also very fast as compared to the fusion welding process where we first need to melt the metal then we need to do the welding uh, and uh, fumes are there okay harmful fumes are there volatile gases are there filler has to be added and then again uh, to solidify from the molten state to the room temperature it takes a much much longer time okay but that all is uh, not here so we can do it very fast volatile fumes are not required filler material is not required okay high heat and energy is not required so we are uh, seeing as this process as a green process uh, more environmental friendly process it make creates less pollution less energy is required because if we don't require melting okay melting will require lot of energy and heat so if we can avoid melting itself that means we are saving lot of energy uh, and heat okay which is consumed in the process okay and finally there are many defects due, due to solidification during the solidification process uh, you may have uh, read in production process like pores are there voids are there distortion is there so many types of uh, different defects cracks micro cracks occur so most of these defects are not uh, uh, formed in the solid state welding process of course there are some different types of defects but uh, they are less detrimental and if the process is followed uh, properly with the recommended uh, uh, parameters then most of the uh, defects of the fusion welding process don't occur in the solid state welding process okay so this way this process is uh, done okay so now what i will do i will just show you a small animation by which we'll understand this uh, friction stir welding uh, process okay. so this is the mechanism so i uh, will start here okay so here we are going from uh, the right hand direction to the leftward direction you can see the tool is rotating okay and the tool has penetrated the surface and then here in the second image it has also done the welding and finally the retraction is there okay and at this process we will stop the uh, uh, welding process uh, so if you see this will this can be easily done on any of the conventional or milling machines okay so you have to give uh, some rpm uh, at the start in this process you have to give an rpm and you have to give a predefined feed rate by which it will move uh, in the vertical direction okay now in this second step there is no vertical movement uh, we have given a rotational speed and what we need to give is a uh, uh, some speed or feed in the horizontal direction okay so in the cnc machine or even on a conventional machine you can give this uh, uh, feed rate okay where your tool will move in the leftward direction that is in the horizontal direction and then finally you will retrace the tool okay so you, even if you see um, this process is very easy uh, like if you are doing on a cnc machine uh, it's a simple g code uh, m code where we'll have this vertical movement okay z vertical movement along with some rotation uh, uh, coolant is not allowed in this process because we are heating it we intend it to heat it so if we uh, use the coolant then heating will not occur okay then in the second process we will um, continue with the rotational motion okay along with some traverse in the horizontal direction in the third we will just retract the tool and stop the tool from rotating okay that will stop the program so this way it is very easy to even uh, simulate uh, this process or do this process on uh, any conventional or cnc machine okay okay so we will just uh, show you the animations of this process so we will understand it better so I will just stop this uh, presentation and show the animations.
Okay, fine. So this was a small animation on this process. Okay. Uh, so how this process was done. Okay, so uh, as I said, we can uh, uh, do this for this uh, butt joint. Okay, so what uh, the example we have seen is the butt joint, uh, but we can do it for the lap joint configuration also. And uh, we can immediately remove the uh, flash or any small um, additional material what is produced in during this process okay so uh, removing it in the plastic state is more easier so we'll remove it immediately so even uh, nowadays uh, we are using this process for even dissimilar metals also so this is you can see this is the material flow which is occurring okay during this process so the material mechanical mixing what i said okay that is due to this action of this pin okay so it may be a threaded pin or a even a um, plain pin okay but uh, we'll get this mechanical action uh, or mechanical mixing at, because of this tool action and we have this uh, different weld zones okay so as in any fusion welding we have this different weld zones so here we are also having weld zones where we have this first zone which is the unaffected zone so that zone has no um, effect of uh, from this process second is this B zone, which is the heat affected zone where the heat has been reached, okay, because of this process. So, as we said, we reach up to 80% of the temperature. So, some heat is uh, released to this other portion also, which um, changes its uh, structure to some extent, okay. Uh, if, okay. And finally, we have this thermomechanically uh, affected zone, which is known as the TMAZ. So, that is the affected zone, which is affected both thermally as well as mechanically okay so that means here we can also sense some deformation along with some effect of the heat and finally we have the main zone that is the weld nugget where we uh, have the deformation and the uh, new grains are formed due to this process so this is just for basic understanding we can see different um, zones and we can easily see this nugget okay it will be uh, like an onion ring okay when we have the cross section uh, uh, we can see it as a onion ring in this magnified image uh, finally the application so as said we can use it in aerospace okay then uh, lightweight fuel tanks okay again where, wherever we are using it in aerospace even for this tanks okay if they are specifically used in aerospace we'll uh, go for this aluminum uh, uh, FLW welded uh, aircraft tanks okay fuel tanks uh, then um, cargo floor panels okay. uh, then uh, automotive applications okay. then in ship buildings for this freezer panels we require them deck and wall construction so even in uh, 
ships okay we don't want the ship to be too heavy we want the ship as well as the aircraft to be as light as possible okay A along with good strength okay so that we can uh, carry more passengers or more cargo okay agar if a ship uh, ka, uh, self weight is itself high then we will not have much transportation of cargo or pa passengers okay so ship and aerospace both will be uh, going for this fsw processes again explosive formed hull of ocean weaver and see this is also stupid and even in uh, medical applications x-ray scanner parts you can see this is were done with this fsw process and electronics space technology also so you can see nasa that has created this uh, high strength welds and again the important uh, application here is that we don't want it to just weld it we wanted to weld a very very large length okay so you can see this uh, spacecraft it was fused together it 425 inch friction stirred weld okay so if we had not done a friction stirred weld we would have uh, would have to have a 425 inch fusion weld which is of course possible but uh, uh, we should not take any risk okay because we should have a homogeneous weld strength at all locations okay so Uh, going for a friction stirred weld for this process will create more homogeneous and strong welds. So this was done by NASA, and they have used this lightweight aluminum alloys. Okay, and it would not have been possible using conventional welding methods. Okay, so I am saying it is possible practically maybe, but um, uh, there is high risk of uh, non-homogeneity of this uh, welding joints, and uh, that can uh, be very risky for our uh, space mission. Okay, so. even uh, like i am saying it's practically it may it could have been done but it would have been very very risky so uh, in the economic sense or in the uh, that practical sense of taking risk we we'll, would have avoided it altogether okay so here we can say it was done using a 425 inch fsw even um, um, uh, here you can see um, for this um, space shuttle main tanks and uh, uh, we are using this welds okay even in uh, aerospace where uh, earlier we used to uh, join the different parts of uh, aero air aircraft using rivets nowadays we'll avoid those rivets and replace them with friction stir weld okay because rivets if they break or if they fail then we may risk our aer aeroplane okay if there may be a uh, accident or there can be a failure okay so most of these uh, rivets structures mechanical joints are now being replaced by this fsw finally i will come to the advantages so it overcomes many of the problems associated with conventional joining process it's a low energy input process capable of producing very high strengths in a wide range of materials so wide range means uh, not just aluminum now we can join steel titanium magnesium uh, copper and I just name the metal almost all the metals we can join using fsw even polymers we can join uh, like hdp or even uh, uh, stronger polymers like nylon okay we can also join some polymers to metals like uh, aluminum okay and also dissimilar metal welding is also done like uh, in one of my projects uh, i had done uh, welding of aluminum with copper okay which is practically not possible with fusion welding because aluminum melts at 660 degrees celsius and copper melts at 1100 degrees celsius so by the time you cross 700 degrees celsius aluminum will be flowing all over the place because it has completely melted and copper is still to melt it is still 400 degrees celsius away from its melting point so practically that process will also not be done using fusion welding but by if a friction stirred welding or any of the solid state melting we can easily join uh, dissimilar metals which also have a good difference or significant difference in their uh, melting temperature so something which was considered impossible uh, with fusion welding is now very much possible and easy with uh, solid state welding process and fsw is one of the best uh, choices for such type of welding okay so i will just close with uh, what type of metals we are doing so copper magnesium steel titanium metal matrix composites now dissimilar metals we are also joining like magnesium alloy we are joining to aluminum alloy we are joining my steel to aluminum alloy aluminum to copper aluminum to titanium so for specific application we may require this uh, dissimilar metal joining Uh, which are also uh, possible nowadays and finally polymers so metals i have seen in one study 
alumina alloy was joined to thermoplastics like uh, polypropylene polyacetylene okay uh, pa12 okay and pp that is polypropylene so this is also the new segment of study which we are doing okay thank you sir uh, I, i hope i have uh, uh given you good information uh puddar sir uh, do you have time or we will close hello 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 yes sir yes sir uh do we have some more time or uh, i think uh sir continue sir uh, okay can we continue okay yes, thank sir. you we'll uh, test take small part where we'll understand uh some uh, very interesting aspects okay so we'll come to this final question why we are going for this process so we have already highlighted most of the advantages disadvantages but we'll uh, uh, summarize everything okay so first is we are avoiding melting so again as we melt the problem starts okay because when we melt we will allow to solidify and when we allow to solidify there are lot of solidification problems okay shrinkage is there pores are there voids are there cracks are there distortion is there okay so Uh, and of course we don't have much control over most of this okay with recommended parameters we can try to reduce the impact but uh, we cannot completely nullify it okay so the best thing here is to not melt itself and this is done using solid state welding process where we avoid melting all together which is excellent for us in the first place now this is a very critical important advantage but then that's not the only thing second is it is a very very environmentally friendly process it's a green process so as compared to fusion welding no light is radiated no flashes are there no spark flies there okay smoke is not emitted spatter is not formed a very small spatter is there but that is very negligible as compared to fusion welding uh, and also that is there if we don't use the recommended parameters okay then filler wire, uh, wire is not required that means we don't need to spend additional material and no fumes are there so these are the volatile fumes okay dangerous fumes and uh, we should use this proper protection uh, safety what to say uh, equipment uh, during this welding process okay so that we don't get harmed okay due to this fumes uh, and these fumes are not formed in this solid state welding process so very environmental friendly process the third advantage is we get a homogeneous and void free uh, weld without any oxide inclusion so same will not be true in case of fusion welding unless we go for a, a robotic welding process okay uh, but most of the welding if you see is done by skilled operators and uh, that cannot be homogeneous even if the operator is very skilled it will still not be homogeneous and we may have to resort to uh, robotic welding if you want uh, homogeneously strong weld okay uh, finally this process gives us excellent mechanical properties in fatigue tensile and bend so these are the uh, modes where our um, uh, metal or parts or components can fail okay in fatigue tensile and bend stress okay so these all we get very very excellent properties comparable to that of laser welding okay uh, next is no porosity is there we can operate in all positions welding we cannot operate in all positions like it is very difficult to do uh, welding vertically okay uh, but for fsw that is not a big concern okay because um, it never goes into the uh, uh, molten state so we don't have to worry about gravity and the material falling downwards okay it's still in the solid state so it remains intact even when we are doing uh, vertical uh, welding or inclined welding finally energy efficient is there and there is tolerance to imperfect weld preparations okay that means thin oxide layers can be accepted so uh, as in fusion welding if you don't have a very good uh, what can say plate preparation before welding we may not good uh, get a good uh, weld but uh, here even if there is some oxide layer which is normally happens okay if we keep the plate for some time okay in uh, exposed to the environment then thin oxide layers start developing okay so for the fusion welding if you don't um, remove them it will be a uh, problem we will get a lesser strength weld but in fsw that doesn't uh, become a big problem because these oxide layers are also broken up during the process okay and only a marginal impact will remain 
So you can just see the difference. Uh, when I say distortion during the solidification process, you can see these two uh, uh, okay, plates, okay, which are joined. Okay, one is done by the arc welding, that is the fusion welding process. The another is done by the friction stir welding process. And uh, distortion is present in both of them. Okay, there is a small amount of distortion in the FLW plate also, but that is so less, okay, so less. You cannot just even identify it. Okay, but you can see the uh, distortion in this arc welding process. That is uh, uh, huge, okay, that is really huge. And we have to uh, address it at a later stage. Okay, or maybe do some compensation for this. Okay. Okay, so uh, in most of these um, processes, like uh, I mean, in some uh, processes, our aim may be to reduce the cost. Okay, so uh, why we do dissimilar metal joining is most of the time to reduce the cost. So as said, uh, copper is very costly. Okay, uh, of course, it is less costly than silver, which is the most conductive, but um, still it's uh, costly enough. And if you can... Um, uh, avoid using copper or reduce the use of copper with some alternative uh, metal, then we can mm. save a lot of money. Okay, but again, when we are saying this, we should not um, deviate from the application, we should get the desired results. Okay, so it is possible to remove some amount of copper and replace it with aluminum. Okay, we cannot 100% replace copper, but we can replace copper maybe to 30% or 40% without reducing the quality or the final application effect. Okay, so this is done by using aluminum, which is one third as costlier as um, uh, alum, uh, copper. Okay, but that, for that, again, you should do, we have to do solid state welding of aluminum and copper processes. Okay, which can again be done by uh, this welding process only. So you can see copper cost, it is one third of copper aluminum cost, but it can uh, carry roughly twice as much electrical current. Okay, so wherever we have applications of uh, uh, electrical conductivity or even uh, uh, mechanical heat conductivity we can think of this replacement of copper with aluminum and thermal conductivity if you see that is mechanical heat uh, transfer uh, it is approximately 60 percent of that of copper so uh, that of course that means that if we are replacing copper with aluminum we have to put in much more aluminum for maybe one kg of copper we may have to put maybe 1.8 or 1.9 uh, kg of um, aluminum but that will that is still economical okay in terms of economical it is still economical because aluminum is one third priced so the applications here are uh, biometallic housing sinks battery housings battery cell connectors bush bars okay so these are the various applications i'll just show you the applications very fast you can see uh, the joining of aluminum copper And these are the biometallic housings. Okay, so I will conclude here. Okay, so finally you can see uh, how we are using aluminum copper here. So what welding you have done here is a solid state welding uh, of either we can do a butt welding also and a lap welding also. So in between you can do a lap weld and at the side if you require, we can do a butt weld. Okay, so wherever you require high load areas, wherever the high load areas are there, we'll use copper. And wherever the low, low load areas are there, why use copper? Okay, we'll uh, use aluminum. Okay, so finally the heat is taken out from the, uh, uh, okay, the load heat load is taken out. Okay, wherever the high load heat is, high heat load is there, we'll be using copper. And wherever low load heat is there, we'll be using aluminum. So this way we can, instead of using 100% copper, we can use a mixture of copper and aluminum at a reduced cost okay the component or this uh, heat sink will be making it as a reduced cost okay so thank you here i will um, conclude the session so i hope to how we can make economical products using this uh, solid state building process okay over to you Poddar, sir yes thank you Nice talk, and thank you for enlightening us on solid state welding. I hope our audience have made uh, some insights, got some insights on solid state welding. Mm -hmm. Thank you.
थैंक यू वंस अगेन फॉर एक्सेप्टिंग योर इनविटेशन एंड फॉर स्पेंडिंग योर टाइम विद मी yeah thank you sir thank you thank you very much is there any questions i am also free for that if you in, if in case or any uh, uh, yeah. no uh, i would like to hand over to webinar Sir, there are no questions from the audience. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, good. Thank you. Thank you, once again, sir. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot. Can I leave, sir? Yes, yes, sir. Please. Okay, thank you. Have a nice day. Bye.